Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi, Nai. Hi, Kathy. How are you? What's up? I am here. I'm great. I'm here. Oh, so, on vibrate. Last week, we had an amazing time with Elaine and Rush Cam with our multi potentialites. And I mean, I watched back the show last from last week, and there were just so many nuggets, you know. And it was like watching the show all over again, like I wasn't there, like it was just new for me. I mean, yeah, I so had had we do that. we're so caught up in the actual real time show that we actually kind of. It's like everything's just happening. So it is good to, you know, take a minute to actually re-watch everything. Oh, hello. Oh, hi. Hi. Hi, Rush. Hi, hi Rush. Not Rush Cam. Rochelle. But I'm actually a Cam too. No, no, not Rush Cam. Adrenaline. What do you mean you're so a Cam? So if you too? missed last week's episode, you can check it out on our YouTube page. Subscribe. Share our videos and of course follow us on Instagram and Facebook. So welcome again, everybody. Good evening. I am Kathy Goodall and I am a leadership and growth accelerator. I am a connector of dots, businesses, brands, and people. And of course, I'm a part of the Emerge Trio. Me? Yeah. Okay. Hi guys, I'm Naomi Garrick, also known as the PR Chick, and I'm a personal branding coach as well as the founder of Garrick Communications, a boutique PR agency here in Jamaica. I'm also one of the founding members of the Emerge Trio. Hi, my name is Rochelle Cameron. I'm hot as hell. <laughs> I don't even remember what I do right now. I'm so hot. Are you guys hot? I'm so hot. Did, did so you know, see, I'm in, you know, normally I'm in did like black. No, I am so hot. So I'm in this very thin dress, but I'm I'm just like the AC. I had to turn the AC on like 17 a while ago. I went outside and a plume of hot air. You notice my background is completely Are we gonna different. Are going to die? Because I'm sitting directly underneath the air conditioning. But this is certainly a good time for all because anybody who never trusts in the Lord, Know that they don't want to go to hell because if it's hotter than this, not a nice place. Trust in God. Trust in God. Sure. Listen, I really contemplated moving my so, setup into my bedroom because that's where the eight is. And I'm, I'm dying. I'm dying right now here. <laughs> oh, it's awful. <laughs> it's awful. I'm in my bedroom and I'm directly on the desk. So 2020 has been a year of change. It's been a year of frustration. It's been a year of COVID. And now we have the Sahara dust that we're dealing with. And it's time for us to do what, ladies? Reset. It's time for reset. Really? To reset. That was when you say reset. I was like, to emerge. Oh, you. No, reset. <laughs> oh, my Lord. So to remind everybody, registration is now open for our workshop on July 18th, and it is called Reset because it is a time for us to reset and figure out what is next for the rest of 2020 and beyond. So we have some special guests today. I'm very excited about today. I mean, we've been messaging each other all week, going back and forth about different topics of discussion and questions that we want to ask because we have Dr. Alfred Dawes who is a general laparoscopic and weight loss surgeon. He is the, the medical director of Windsor Wellness Center and Caribia Medical Limited. So we want to welcome Dr. Daz. Hi, Dr. Daz, how are you? Hi, hey, how are you? Welcome. Thank you Great. for joining us. We also have Jay Edwards, who is a performance expert. He is the director of Spy, Spry Training and he's an advanced nutrition coach. Hi, Jay. Oh, Hi, Jay. Nice. Welcome. Hey, Jay. Thank you. Hey, Rochelle. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining <laughs> us. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Okay, you guys have nice backdrops and setups yeah, and stuff. Yeah, Dr. Dawes, can like, like, you tell us a little bit about what yeah. you do? 
<laughs> Wait, Look, Pat, this, are you, this are is you just the coolest on? part of the house right now. So <laughs> this is this is just convenient. Is it me or there's a window that's open, there's a fan, I'm getting some cross ventilation, so I'm trying not to sweat under the glare. So that's that's it for my background. Oh Usually my I don't want something plain and simple. You know all the etiquette that you advise people about these Zoom games and stuff like that. Because it looks interesting, your backdrop looks I know, but you guys are like, people are like, I saw the doctor, backdrop look nice. It looks nice. <laughs> Jay, you're in the studio. Are you trying to tell us that we need to get our asses up and get into the studio? No, it looks no, good. no, no. It, it, yeah, that's area you know, the coolest place I can find. So, yeah, no, 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 no pun intended, right? <laughs> okay. No. Kathy, I think, oh, Kathy, you're back with us. Thanks for having me, ladies. Kathy, I'm wondering if you might actually really need to yeah. move your location. I, I think I might have to move because my internet looks like it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I know, I know I you're trying to have another link. Because I keep losing you guys. Okay, so Kathy, you want to change your location in the meantime? Yeah, clearly, clearly my, my back. Okay, no problem. All right. So Go ahead, Rochelle. Yeah, so while can we find somewhere cool in our house that has internet, <laughs> we'll move on. So gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I was particularly interested in this episode. Um, I do sometimes like to work out. I like workout clothes more than I like the actual working out, Jay, I'm sorry. Um, and you know, sometimes you kind of say to yourself, I know, I may, I may have a little 10 pounds here or there to lose. Um, would it just be actually easier if I just went to Dr. Dawes and let him kind of smooth me out and create some abs for me? Or do I really have to work on it? So <laughs> viewers, today we're going to be talking about that. And we're going to be having an interesting discussion because some of us are wondering, do I, and even if I go to Dr. Dawes, do I still have to go and work out after that and eat good? Or I can just go and get tucked in, tightened abs up and all is well and i see nowadays and i don't know dr Dawes, if you do it because i see that the buttocks can be somehow hoisted yeah <laughs> the, the, the I, I don't do it but that's the the fat okay. transfer as one oh, patient says okay. like you're transferring <laughs> money from your saving I'm very interested in that. <laughs> that's funny <laughs> <laughs> So today we're yeah, talking to you guys about your body and, and, and we're looking at... Well, we certainly hear from Jay his views on whether or not it's the scalpel or it's the weights. So we're listening out for that, Jay. So viewers, we're talking about your body and you and we have Jay from Spry Training, who is also a nutrition expert. Um, are you guys hearing me? My internet seems to be having some problems too. You hearing me now? I'm hearing you. Jay, are you hearing? Okay. So, and we you. also have... Jay, are you okay, hearing? Good. So we also have Dr. Yep, Alfred. I'm hearing you, ladies. Okay. Hearing everybody, yeah. Yeah, the internet is like it hot. The internet wants some laparoscopes as thing. So, um... We, Dr. Dawes is a general laparoscopic and weight loss surgeon, and he is medical director of Windsor Wellness Center and Caribbean Medical Limited. So, um, Dr. Dawes, let me start with you because I always want to hear about surgery. Can you tell us a little bit about what you actually do as general laparoscopic surgery and how it could possibly help us? Okay, so the... My, my um, main area of, of training is, is actually in general surgery. And then afterwards, I branched out and I did the laparoscopy, the bariatrics, and then the aesthetics in the form of the liposuction. But um, of interest, it's the bariatric surgery, which I do laparoscopically. And this is basically reducing the size of the stomach or rerouting mm -hmm. the direction that the food takes so you eat less, you don't get as hungry and you don't absorb as much food in some of the procedures. 
So what that does is really to restrict your calories down to a level where you're consistently eating about 800 calories a day or so, 800 to 1,000, and you're not hungry all the time, you're not miserable. But should you try to eat more than that, you're going to feel sick, you're going to throw up. And what that does is to create a caloric deficit. And Jay can speak a little bit more because we talk about caloric deficits every time we meet up. But um, once you're in that severe caloric deficit, you're burning way more than you're, you're consuming, then your body's going to turn on its own internal reserves. And what we want to do with healthy weight loss is for the body to turn on the fat reserves and that way you can lose massive amounts of weight. So I've had patients lose almost 200 pounds, uh, on average over 100 pounds, because those are the persons who will be coming to me for that type of surgery. And then we have the less invasive procedures, such as a gastric balloon, where you put uh, through the mouth into the stomach without any cuts or any going off to sleep, a balloon that you blow up in the stomach and that takes up space you're not as hungry, and it again restricts how much you can eat. Stays in for a year, and you can adjust the size up and down depending on how you're tolerating it or how much you want to lose. And after a year, it comes out, and we would hope that during that year when you have lost your 50 or 60 pounds, you would have also learned healthy eating habits that would keep the weight off in the long term. And then there's the as a lot of people would like to look at it, the quick fix, the liposuction, where you try to take out, uh, uh, usually the, the maximum is about eight or so pounds of fat out of different areas. A lot of times, the really popular ones are the 360 lipos, where you take out the, the, the fat from around the, the abdomen, the flanks, and the back, where you can do some sculpting and get that, as, as the females like to call it, snatched waist and a more prominent buttocks. But with all of the procedures that I do, you have to have a lifestyle change. Otherwise, the weight will come back. And I have patients now in my office who are on their second lipo or third lipo because they did not change their habits. And so the weight comes back. And then sometimes the weight can even get redistributed elsewhere. So you have a nice slim waist, but then all of a sudden your face becomes uh, round up or your arms get bigger or if you do your abdomen uh, one patient told me that since i did life on her abdomen the fat drained down in her back and i had to say no the fat does not drain down in your back it's because you continue to eat you have less fat cells to put on the weight in the belly so the fat is going to find somewhere else and in your case on the back so whatever you do you're gonna have to change your habits you're gonna have to do some working out because there's absolutely no quick fix that wins the wellness we can nudge you in the right direction but you have to maintain a disciplined lifestyle where you you watch your calories and the quality of the calories that you consume awesome so sorry um, to disappoint you <laughs> <laughs> so it so so there's work to actually get the surgery done and you still have to go to J after. But the thing too is that um one as as you spoke about the different types of surgery and the caloric intake, I see Weedo. Hi Weedo, Weedo is saying whether or not eight hundred to a thousand calories is enough for the day. Because oh, yeah. the other thing I wanted to ask you, Dr. Dawes, for those of us who are in when you if you do like a bariatric surgery and you um you you make your stomach smaller your eyes still see the food and you still want the food but you just can't manage it well the there's, no surgery, away. there's no surgery for feeling peckish you just have to learn to live Visibly. with that Visibly. i can't do anything about that and that's part of the pre-surgery counseling that you must go through you're still gonna have bored eating you're still gonna feel peckish you're still gonna want to walk past the fridge or the cupboard 10 times and open it to look and see if anything magically appeared in there whenever you're eating whenever you're studying those are habits that you just have to to get rid of and learn that it's head hunger and it's different from true hunger but with respect to the the 800 to 1000 calories what happens is that as you lose weight you have what is called metabolic adaptation where your body actually downsizes the metabolic rate to match your intake and anybody who has been on a diet they would know that 
you eat a small amount and you lose 20 pounds, you continue to eat that same amount and you don't lose another ounce. And that's because your body has dropped the metabolic rate to match exactly what you're taking in. So you hit a new balance. So when you drop your, your intake to 800 to 1,000 calories, eventually you will reach the point where your body matches that intake with what it's burning. Which is why if you weigh 500 pounds, um, you may lose 200, but you're not going to go down to, uh, you may, uh, to a weight of, of um, 120 or 140 with some other types of surgery. If you're not absorbing everything, then you can uh, go lower with the weight. But again, you will realize that you're eating tiny amounts, but you're not losing any more weight. And that's because of metabolic adaptation. Oh. Okay. Adaptation. Okay. Kathy, let me hand over to you because you know, I will get very carried away. I wouldn't mind a little ironing out of some back fat and stuff. But let me hand over to you, Kathy. I won't, I won't, I won't even entertain you because I don't know where you'll be getting the back fat from. But Dr. Das, can you tell us what the difference is between being overweight and being obese? All right. So we use the scale and it's imperfect, but uh, it's a, a measure of your weight and your height. So if I'm in my office and I hear that there's a, a 220 pound patient outside, I need more information. Is this person six feet four inches? Is this person five foot one? Because that makes a big difference. If you're taller, you're allowed to carry more weight because you have longer bones, bigger uh, muscles to support that. Versus if you're a small frame, the weight that you carry would naturally be less. So. What we did was to work out a ratio to see your weight to your height, and it's the weight in kilograms over your height in meters squared, and that gives you a number. And I can hear that number and give, get an idea of whether or not you're overweight or obese. Obese meaning that you're grossly overweight. So normal would be 19 to 24.9. Once you're at 25, you would be considered overweight. Uh, once you hit 30, that is when you start to get into the obesity range. And once you hit 40, you're morbidly obese. Now, a lot happens at 40, uh, not the age, the BMI. That is when the hormonal changes start to happen uh, to, so much that it becomes more and more difficult for you to lose the weight and keep it off because of not only the metabolic adaptation, but you have enough fat on you that the fat actually interferes with your metabolism and causes you to store fat even easier. So mm -hmm. the success rate of losing weight with diet and exercise once you hit a, meta, a, a BMI of 40 becomes like 5% at 10 years. That's your success rate. So that is when surgery becomes more important. But uh, what we try to do is to get people to not go too close to that 40 and I mean, some patients come in and their BMIs are like 50, 60, 70. Mm -hmm. So you, you can imagine how much excess weight they have on for their height. But um, when I said that the BMI is imperfect, it was really designed for Caucasians. So African blood, we are of a, a bigger frame. And because of that, I'll tolerate a higher BMI. For my step, whenever I go down to a normal BMI, my grandmother gets really worried because I look sick. But then if you, even though a normal BMI is, is, uh, would be 24, if you're Asian and your BMI is 24, you'd be considered overweight because they have a smaller frame. So I think that we, you know, bouncing around in the 26 or 27 is not bad. We don't aim for perfection. A lot of that has to do with more, if you're carrying a lot of muscles, versus your fat percentage being high as well. So those are some of the things that we look at in addition to just saying somebody's obese or uh, they're, they're, have, they're overweight. Okay, so at what point does surgery become recommended? All right, so once you hit a BMI of 40, then surgery should become one of the, the, the major considerations. We also do surgery for lower BMIs if you have chronic diseases such as hypertension and diabetes because the surgery can actually reverse those conditions. And I have quite a number of success stories where persons have found out that they were diabetic or pre-diabetic, did the surgery, came off medication, and they're quite fine. High blood pressure went, high cholesterol went, sleep apnea almost always goes, arthritis improves. 
So if you have a medical condition that is worsened by your weight, then we would do the, the surgery. And what they, they have actually shown is that in persons with diabetes, high blood pressure, and those kind of those who do the surgery, they actually live longer than those who try to lose the weight on their own. And a lot of that has to do with the hormonal effects of the surgery itself. Okay. All right. So, Jay. Hi, Jay. Hi, hi, hi. Hello. Are, are you good? You ready, Seto? Yeah, I was just, yeah, he was just moving the camera around. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry about that. All right. So I'm going to jump in with a couple questions for you now. Um, right. Tell us for those who don't know you. I mean, I know some people would have met you at our last Emerge workshop slash summit um, when we did our journey mapping and you spoke um, there. But tell us a little bit, what do you do as a performance expert and nutrition coach? And tell us a little bit about Spry. Okay, so um, hi guys, my name is Jay Edwards. Now, my um, profession goes across not just fitness, but it ties into nutrition, it ties into mindset, and it ties into recovery. So performance as a whole. Um, Sprite Training is an organization that believes in lifestyle intervention. Um, as Dr. Dawes mentioned earlier, lifestyle change is very important to any person wanting to lose weight. Um, so at Sprite, we assess you um, based upon where you are. We also look into if you're carrying more fat or more lean mass, because everything about that particular person has an effect on what type of training would suit the result that you get. So as a performance-based um, coach, I gather all of that information. Um, I work closely with doctors as well in terms of me be looking at somebody's blood chemistry on why they're not losing weight, but somebody could be um, working out really hard over a period of time, maybe three, four months, not seeing any results, and is blaming it probably on the person that's training them or saying all different kinds of stuff, but it could be due to their blood chemistry. They could have high levels of stress. Why they're not losing weight, it could be that their sleep is poor. It could be other markers. So as a performance um, coach, I look at all the aspects that could be affecting fat loss or weight loss, if that's the case and try and tie it all in together in order to get the success that the person needs. Okay, thank you. So speaking about weight loss, what what are your thoughts on weight loss surgery? I know that, um, um, I, I, see, I see Dr. Dawson in the mornings at Spry as well, um, <laughs> sometimes, but I know that I don't think time, I'll yeah. ever see Jay at Dr. Dawes. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, curious I, I hope I don't ever need to visit Dr. <laughs> for a weight loss surgery. Um, to be honest, I think one of the mo most important points from my perspective is mindset. Um, weight loss surgery for me is something that, based upon my profession and why I'm in the profession that I'm in, is because I believe in my option. Not to say that Dr. Dawes' option isn't viable. Of course it's viable. If the person has gone too far um, and need medical in intervention, if, if it reaches the point that the person is diabetic and or the person has any other chronic illnesses which is going to um, pose risk of death, then I definitely would push forwards for them to then have that kind of um, intervention. However, in terms of somebody just going to do a weight loss surgery who doesn't really um, have a, a, a substantial amount of body fat to drop, which is, 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 is really damaging to their health at that point, then I wouldn't be for that. So um, I think there is, there is space for weight loss surgery, um, but I'm an avid believer in trying to have psychological intervention first to discover why the person has reached to where they have and why they think they need to go for surgery. Dr. Dawes also mentioned um, in his practice that he has a process which goes through counseling too. Um, right. So, I mean, it, it's, it's the responsibility of the professionals to really make sure that the person um, has explored other options, specifically exercise, because I mean, I could list 
I could list for the, the whole evening the benefits of exercise. It's not just for losing weight. The benefits of exercise is and should be a part of lifestyle because it, it's responsible for so many things that happens in the cells. So right. to just think that you can carry out weight loss surgery as a, as a, as a pose of not um, experiencing exercise because you, you have negative connotations towards exercise, maybe because of how it was delivered to you previously. Maybe some persons have um, risked injury. Maybe they picked up injury before. So they, the, 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 the whole conversation needs to be explored why that individual is um, looking at utilizing weight loss surgery as an option to, to drop their, their weight. Okay. So, so let me... You know, just to question. pick up on, on that, you know, okay. there, there are some patients who, who come and when I finish talking to them, I know they're not coming back for a second appointment because they came with the intention of, all right, I'm going to cut out a part of my stomach and I'm going to lose this weight and that's it. And, mm -hmm. you know, as, um, as, as Jay was saying, that, that is uh, a lot of persons who don't need the surgery because of health reasons, they're looking for a quick fix. And I strongly discourage that. And uh, I mean, sometimes they may go and they get the surgery elsewhere, that's fine. But uh, you have to have certain standards and I, I firmly believe in this thing. You have to find what the roots of the weight gain was, if it's a psychological issue, comfort eating, stress eating, or you know you just had a bad patch and you're, you want to get back on track. You can get back on track through your, your diet and exercise program. So the weight loss is reserved for persons who are really in trouble. Uh, I know in other countries, they're really pushing it for the first choice for everybody, but I still, discourage some patients who come to team because when i'm talking to them i can pick up that they're looking for a quick fix and they're not going to be committed to the process and those are the persons who can regain after surgery by eating sweets and drinking sodas so so just to touch on that before i go back to jay then it, are you saying that just for individuals that are doing the weight loss like the bariatric surgery or does that also include those that would come in to do like the um, liposuction. Do you, do they also go through, go through that same process, or in terms of evaluation, right. or if I just want to lose a little, as Rochelle said, a little bit from the hips or legs or whatever tummy, can I just come in, do a consult, and get that done? Well, because the the bariatric surgery is an intensive workup, and it's a permanent yeah. lifestyle change, and you're talking about losing massive amounts of weight. Uh, in a yeah. short span of time, there are a lot of psychological implications. So you have to run through the full process of working with a nutritionist to make sure that you can stick to a rigid diet. And you have to be cleared by the psychologist because it does affect not just your physical health, but your social mm -hmm. health. And there mm -hmm. are a couple of ruined relationships out there that I can say that I'm responsible for because people's uh, relationships, uh, attitudes to each other change. And, you know, some people, their relationships don't work out, uh, whether it's a spouse getting too jealous of the newfound attention or somebody loving the attention too much and thinking that, hey, I don't have to settle with this person anymore. So there are a lot of issues that you have to look at. With respect to the, the straight cosmetic uh, procedure, I still try to encourage persons to make that lifestyle change and I drill it in their head that, hey, look, I'm going to take off some weight off your body. You're going to be immediately a bit, uh, bit lighter walking home. If you continue to eat the same way, the weight that you use to burn, what you to, the, the calories that you need to carry around that heavier weight are now going to become excess calories to be stored as fat. So that part of it, I usually encourage them, but there's not that stringent a requirement um, as with the, the bariatric procedures. Okay, okay. So Jay, for, for someone that, let's say they were obese and they were recommended to do that type of weight loss surgery, would it not be then a good step to now come and meet with someone like you to work on their physical wellness program in terms of exercise um, with your facility? Um, it, as I, again, perspective is, is, is a hell of a thing because yeah. my perspective yeah. is always going to be pushing exercise first. 
Um, so I, for me to, to kind of say, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm four persons doing surgery first and coming to exercise. Um, that's, that, that's a very difficult one to, to really answer because that I'm always going to push exercise, right? Regardless, I'm always going to push exercise. I mean, Dr. Dawes is my main one. <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not going to recommend surgery. I, I, as I said, on, until it's chronic illness, risk of death, I'm going to always, because I, I, I have seen persons, or I've worked with many persons where once they get into the right mindset, and we use various methods to get people into the right mindset, once they can adopt the mindset, I'm no psychologist, but once a person gets into the right mindset, um, mentally, if you're there, or if you get there mentally, the rest is, is history. The body will then take you places that you probably thought you wouldn't go. So um, a precursor to the exercising, going for surgery, um, no. But um, I can see where it can be effective, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm not the person that's going to, to endorse that. If if it's not detrimental, so I mean, because okay. I because I, I do have clients like that, I do have clients right. like that. But the, the funny thing is, with clients like that who may have come from Doctor Dawes and they start working out, what you find is the person's mindset hasn't substantially shifted. So I don't have the data in front of me, but you find, or based upon my anecdotal evidence, I see these people often having to go back to do surgery again because the head wasn't fixed in the first place, or we haven't dealt with the reason why this problem may reoccur. So um, I think that the, the major factor, I could go into um, other social constructs as well, as Dr. Dawes did, which, which may have a person wanting to quickly lose weight or quickly change how their body appears. Um, but that, that root cause needs to be addressed. And I'm not saying surgery doesn't address that because they have to go through all those things before they go to surgery. But I'm a great fan of um, dealing with the chimp, dealing with the mental space of the individual and getting them to, to love exercise. When I'm finished with them, they will love exercising. <laughs> love exercise. That's a strong, love is a strong word for exercise, Jay. Love is a strong word for exercise. <laughs> And then Paula, I, I, I did not love exercising this morning. Yeah, but, I mean, but I appreciate what will come. I, you see, one. I think one of the misconceptions is, and one of the issues we have is that, is that person sees exercise as a, a, a means to an end of weight loss. Weight loss. They've right. always associated exercise. I need to now pick up this habit when my 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 um body composition is now out of control. However. Um, exercise is very important for health, which comes before body composition. And mm -hmm. that is where I think the marketing detail needs to be. If I'm to touch on the issues to do with um, why companies are still marketing vegetable oil, which is, this, is not good for your, for, for, for your body. These things are what are causing issues with inside your body. But that, that's, a, that's a government issue. That's a funding issue. That's a huge issue. So... I mean, I've seen where persons, when they understand um, exercise from a health perspective. So if I looked at you and I said, you are 35 years old. However, when I have um, worked I'm out taking, your biological age, years. What? <laughs> well, when I say your biological age is, is 80 years old, but you, you, you appear to be 35, mm -hmm. you start asking me, why is my bi biological age 80, 85? I'm like because your body fat is too high, your heart age is too old, and you then start to trace it back to lifestyle. You then start to now showcase that your health is falling apart because of the substance that you put in your mouth and the lack of activity that you're prepared to take, which should be a part of your life, not should become a part of lifestyle just to lose weight. Mm -hmm. So it's a whole conundrum. Okay. Dr. Dawes, I saw your face a couple times while Jay was speaking. I'm not sure if you want to, uh, if you have anything to say before Rochelle gets to her um, questions. Well, no, just to, to um, re-emphasize the, the whole thing about the mindset, you know, before coming yeah. to, to surgery. I, I think a lot of it has to do with 
uh, when, when you look at weight regain, this is one of the big things in the field of bariatric surgery. Uh, patients who put on back a lot of weight or all of the weight after surgery. And, you know, one of the guys I studied with was, was um, from Kuwait. And he went back, we both came back, went back to our country in 2012. And right now, he says that a significant portion of his surgeries are redos for persons who have lost the weight and put it back on. So it's like, you know, I've never done a redo surgery here. Uh, you know, the majority of my patients, they lose the weight and they never gain five pounds. You may have somebody may put on back at 30 pounds or 50 pounds, but you never get to that state. What is the difference? He's like, listen, man, we live in a desert. There's nothing to do here except eat. So people will go back and eat and they'll eat the sweets, they'll drink. I have about four patients now who have uh, regained some weight. And it's the same thing. They fell back into snacking or sodas and uh, for one person it was nuts. So the the, the um, when you have when that you small have that amount, amount, it's usually some sort of stress that they have gone through. But if you have a large number of redos, and I think uh, Jay would be commenting on, on uh, back in the UK, those countries, because they're such a driven fast food culture, the US, and the UK and Europe in general, well, the UK mostly, they have a lot of redos because people go right back into the old habits. And uh, even in the US, they're saying that a subset of the Latinas, the Latinas generally put on about the weight, and it's because of they think their culture is all about gathering around eating food. Uh, in Jamaica, mm -hmm. we don't have that as much. So I think um, we're lucky. Uh, in that the, the patients who come to us, uh, like I say, you know, it's a self-weeding thing where some people don't come back for the second appointment once you show them the commitment so that they get um, fixed quick, quickly, crowd, they, they filter themselves out. But our culture, uh, whenever we stick to something, you know, whether it's going to the gym with, with Jay or whenever they get to surgery, you show them that this is for health reasons, not just the cosmetics of losing weight. They tend to do well. So, so it's, it's really, it's, it's for both, I would say, for what Jay is saying with exercise and what you're saying with the, um, the weight loss surgery, it, it takes a lot of discipline as well as mindset. Because as you said, you could... You could start off well right. and then if you don't have the discipline to maintain it then you go right back discipline, to where you were discipline, discipline. You, you, you've hit the word you've hit the word discipline is doing what you have to do even when you don't love it and this is yeah. this is the key problem if persons aren't disciplined what you're faced with what is in front of you um yeah. you then you then you then just eat what whatever is in front of you so i mean it's it's Discipline is key. It's critical. Um, yes, I do understand. And I've worked with people who don't understand discipline at all because they never had to be disciplined um, within their normal life. So, I mean, I, I've had some corporate persons I've worked with and they can't be disciplined within the exercise space. However, they clearly have been disciplined to become successful in corporate because you'd have to have gone to university. You'd have to have completed your studies you'd have to have shown discipline in that aspect. So some persons, you have another psychological issue where they will only really achieve their goals if they link it to achieving it for someone else. Mm -hmm. So there are so many psychological um, problems within society. And again, I, I, I really take back to, again, the government for the types of foods that are then available to, to persons because the type of food that are available to persons, some of it is really toxic, and it's what is causing wholeheartedly um, a lot of the weight gain within society. So there's a huge, yeah. it's a bigger picture. Okay. Our food um, culture. Um, you're saying, Dr. Dawes, sorry, about our food That's culture? It. Unfortunately, our food culture is, is, uh, is changing, especially over the last 20 years years or so. I mean, even in our lifetimes, growing up fast food was a treat. Now, yes, the sir. canteens in the schools are run by fast food companies. You know, so the kids are getting sensitized at an early age to burgers, chicken and fries and patties every day. And these are high calorie, very dense calorie foods. 
and yeah. they get used to it, they acquire the taste, it becomes a norm, and then it's going to be the go to convenience food later on. So that is why mm -hmm. we're seeing this rise in obesity rates that has been training upwards steadily. And you know, the funny thing is, when I was training on, in the, the Bahamas, um, I realized that Jamaica was 10 years behind where the Bahamas was on the curve, and we still mirror that. And when you look at Guyana now, that just found oil, and all of this development is taking place there, their rate is about 10 to 15 years behind where Jamaica was. But it's the same steep curve mm -hmm. of uh, a, mass, a rapid increase in, in the rate of obesity in the population. And it's, it's something that if we don't address it now, we're going to reach a situation where we're overburdened with chronic diseases and our health system is just not robust enough to deal with it. Yeah, but no, have, but um, Dr. Dawes, I'll, I'll interrupt you there to say that some, some parts of the medical fraternity want that, want an uh, overhaul in chronic disease because an uh, overhaul in chronic disease means more patients. Um, so we're not, we, we've seen other societies, as you mentioned, with the Bahamas 10 years behind Jamaica. What about the societies which are well ahead of Jamaica? We're seeing mm -hmm. that their chronic illnesses are not reducing, but are growing even more. Um, and if it, it, it is going to become the norm for us to carry on in the direction where it increases rather than decrease. But Jay, when, when we're in medical school, they teach us the basic sciences, your biochemistry, your uh, anatomy, your physiology, and then you jump to pharmacology. They teach you about drugs immediately. And you right. have that as the go-to. So right. I mean, surgery, I'm a more practical person. There's something to cut out, I'm gonna cut it out. You can't exercise away an appendicitis or a hernia. But the truth is that a lot of what we we treat patients with uh, it can damage their bodies in other ways there's this big thing about cholesterol cholesterol mm -hmm. tablets are blockbuster drugs they, they invented the term blockbuster drugs to to talk about cholesterol medication and they tell you about a 40 percent reduction in the chance of dying all of those are just gymnastics with the numbers the absolute risk is about one percent difference whether or not you take it but they cause so much liver damage, muscle damage, that if you really weigh the benefits of these medications, what they're doing to your body, you would not take them. But mm -hmm. they give nice pens and they fly the experts out and the drug reps come and everybody tells right. you, you have to do it and you have sensitization conferences. And all of these things are hell-bent on just selling drugs. And I mean, right. there are some, you know, some talk within even the surgical uh, specialty that you know the, the the doctors don't want to send the sur send the patients for surgery because when they do surgery you're gonna get rid of all of the chronic illnesses and they're gonna lose a patient. So there's a little bit of back and forth even in the field of bariatrics and you know the endocrinologists who treat a lot of these diseases. But um, the truth is that the, the medical system is broken. We we treat the, the symptoms and the manifestations of diseases, and we yeah. don't look at the underlying cause, which is eating habits and exercise ultimately. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think for us growing up too, we were a lot more active. You know, we were outside oh, yeah. all the time. Now the kids are behind a screen all, all day the long. Time. And, and we yeah. ate better because we ate what was cooked at home. Yep. Right. Now, every, most people, it's just so convenient to eat out, you know, whether it's junk food or if it's a restaurant. COVID I mean, right right now, during COVID, I mean, it's so easy right. to just use seven right. crates or my quick place and just order your food and it's there. And like, you don't even have to eat out. Convenience or your warm up a frozen meal, you know, they have frozen pizzas, frozen burgers, just, frozen everything. Guys, I just ate a, froze, a, a warmed up meal a while ago. But it wasn't a pizza, it was actually two peas, and it was really good. Sorry. <laughs> I, I was gonna say shame, but then you said two peas. Just to bring in our viewers for a little bit, because we have some interesting debate going on in our live comments. And if you're just joining us, we have Dr. Alfred Dawes. Um, and he is a general laparoscopic and weight loss surgeon. And we also have Jay Edwards, a performance expert and director at Sprite Training. Um, I see Alicia talking, asking, how do you get the right mindset? 
Guida is um says people more about the aesthetics than health. Um we're talking about discipline and exercise and how a lot we used to go outside a lot and how much snacks we're eating. So I just want to throw because we're talking some real healthy eating and stuff at this time. And just so that for those persons who are on the live and are sick to themselves, um, listen, I hear not about mindset and, and, and discipline and all of that is very delicious and nice. But I did put on my vision board a sexy body and me did go and cry and Jay back up for two time and I tell me about discipline and mindset. I'm going to have my money. So my God, Dr. Dodd, money. So for those patients, Dr. Dodd, who are like, I have my money. I'm going to need some of this back fat iron out. I'm going to need a tummy tuck. And if you can't cut down because I have a wanga belly, if you can cut that down, throw that in too. Um, how do you actually deal with that psychological assessment of that patient who is just like, I hear what you're saying, dude, but I'm ready, ready. Well, for, well ready. I'll, just, I'll stop you there. For me, with guys, I tell them straight, guys who are carrying huge stomachs are likely to have erectile dysfunction. So I'm like, dude, you can cut away the fat, okay? But erectile dysfunction will come back. So I always tie major health issues that people don't want to hear about, to the reasons why they need to adopt a healthy lifestyle. Because even if you go and see Dr. Dawes, you're going to have to come back to work, to train, or you're going to have to do some type of exercise. Because, or, or, on, 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 unless you're just gonna pop pills for everything that you have issues with. And that's just going to lead to you having an earlier death. So mm -hmm. what's the choice? What's the, what's the, what's the, what's the choice? See, when you get into those practical conversations, because sometimes when you're talking about you know, high blood pressure, a little strokes. Sometimes people don't really hear you, but if you tell, tell a man about erectile dysfunction, he'll come at the gym every morning. He was like, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Dr. Dom, tell me about that patient, Sandra, <laughs> who says, listen, I hear all that you're talking about, but me just me have my money. So, or a well, psychological well. There. How do you treat with a patient like that? Well, everybody who goes in the office, they have to fill out uh, a health profile. And it has mm -hmm. everything in it from your chronic diseases, previous surgery, and so on, to what you eat for breakfast, uh, your cravings, compulsions, um, you know, whether or not you go for seconds, are you satisfied in one plate? Uh, snacks, what, they, what type of food they prefer. So I'm going to have that discussion with you, whether or not, I mean, patients will come and, you know, how may I help you? My belly fat, more is like All right, fine, but let's see how you got to the stage where you need me to suck out the fat out of your belly, as you say. And then we'll go into a conversation and then you'll find out that, you know, somebody was, sometimes people actually carry pictures of how they used to look. Um, a lot of times, a life-changing event, pregnancy, or something like that happened, and they've been. And there, there are persons who have really been working out, but genetics has caused them to put fat in a specific area. And those are the persons who I, um, I wouldn't hesitate at all to the liposuction mm -hmm. on because this is gonna be difficult for them to lose all of that. Uh, they're gonna lose weight all over, and especially if their BMI is within, you know, that that normal range. They're, it's going to be tough for them. And you can see sometimes I have definition elsewhere, but there's this pocket stuff of fat, especially in the women in the lower abdomen, just above a T-section scar. Ooh, that, that low you know. ab. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you're not going to get that with abs. You have to get... So the spot reduction there, who I will, and I have asked patients to go to the gym and get a program because they're coming in and they want you to take as much fat out of them as possible. And I have a cutoff in terms of the BMI. I'm not going to do your surgery if your BMI is greater than 34 because it means that clearly you're having uh, uh, greater issues with overall um, weight gain rather than just one area. And so I, and I'll tell people, I'll be taking off four pounds of fat or so at a time. You can lose that in a week if you're really serious. 
So that discussion is always had in patients to see where they are mentally. Is it that they're just looking for the quick fix? Yes, you will say, for, um, you, you will have patients who come and say, yeah, yeah, I understand all of that and I have my money. And I'm, say, I'm saying to them, you know it's going to come back if you don't change for the simple reason you're walking out lighter and if you continue to eat the same way, the extra calories are going to be stored as fat. So are you accepting that you're going to come back and I'm not going to do your surgery and you're going to go somewhere else and they're going to charge you more money because doing a second life of procedure is more, uh, is more um, work than the first one because of this card. So those conversations are had and a lot of times what happens is that patients end up, they're doing, they end up doing their body mass um, index and they do the base of metabolic rate testing and they look at the nutritionist um, you know, to give them a plan. And some actually lose weight before they come for the procedure. And I do the touch up. And they come, even after surgery, they continue to eat better because now they've been empowered with what they require, how many calories they need to eat to be in a deficit. And I have a lot of patients who are, um, some of them, you know, they're setting up their own gyms and showing their four and a half pictures, but they won't judge. But, um, you do have persons who they continue down that road where they have used that as a springboard for a permanent change. But Dr. Dodd, I'd like to say, I'd like to mention this because you mentioned about, I mean, specifically the females who may just have that little pouch left. What, what I find um, sometimes out there is lack of professional advice within the fitness community. So you have a female who comes and say, um, I don't want to lose um, too much of my hips. I don't want to lose my butt in specific, but I really want to drop the body fat right here in my stomach. Now, what I've seen happen um, or, or, or has happened is then a trainer will put the individual on a program, which is a weight loss program, and the individual starts to lose muscle tissue as well as body fat. Now, a female now, can get very disturbed if she then says, but this is not what I wanted. So if I have to lose my butt, to lose the little fat that I have in my stomach, I'm not interested. So exactly. therefore, the type of training required and the type of um, nutritional approach would need to be about fat loss and maintaining muscle tissue, which, which quite frankly doesn't happen for most of the times. So sometimes for, for, for these females who have that little issue there, the, the approach that um, the fitness community has taken to try and resolve it, ending up causing probably more psychological damage than it was worth in the first place. So then they then, then they still think surgery is the only option because there is no way to drop that body fat, which is uh, in the lower abdominal. It was sometimes genetics their extremely stubborn. And sometimes they may not want to, to get that last area because that's the last bit of area of, of fat to go. They're going to have to right. lose their thighs. They're going to have to lose right. their butt. And unless they're building it and making it more muscular, some women, right. they still want that voluptuous curve um, in their, their, their lower half. And they are afraid that losing that, and I mean, you know, you would see some of the pictures when they're younger. They had that. And then pregnancy, and then boom, they just got... The, 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 the little, as, as um, they call it, the, the fat upper pubic area, FUPA, the, it just won't go no matter what they do. So they would have to significantly drop their body fat percentage, but they don't want to look as toned um, as somebody with a generally low body fat percentage. And that is, that is when I would have some consideration um for you know using that spot reduction so if they don't want to change their composition too much but they just want to change in one area then surgery is a fairly decent way to look at that because you know to tell somebody yeah all right you need to get down to what eight percent or ten percent when they want to be eighteen percent except they want the belly to be two percent yes, i just got a solution for my belly <laughs> 
I'm not participating in that discussion, okay? I'm coming tomorrow morning at five, and we're going to work on the, we call it Dr. Dawes, the FUPA. FUPA. Right. We're going to do some core. Um, but I it's, it's just not, someone to get rid of, and it's, it's very disturbing. Ian has a really age. Ian had a really interesting question. He wants to know. A lot of people in the chat were saying that people say that eating healthy costs a lot more money, and sometimes the surgery works out cheaper than converting no, your lifestyle. No, absolutely no. no. You're, you're gonna you're gonna do surgery, and you're gonna change your lifestyle. There's no getting around it. You have to change your lifestyle. Right. And I mean, so, a lot of, so a lot of patients will, will go to Jay and other trainers. And it's, it's, I encourage them. And especially for men, uh, Ian, if, you, if you're, you're really just looking for uh, surgery to solve the problem, you're not going to get abs like that from surgery. You can have a reduction, they'll start to show. But if you want to get ripped, you can't just get it from surgery. They have this thing where you can do etching and you carve out the fat. But when you touch it, it's not muscle. It's still fat. When you take off your shirt, you're going to look funny. So I don't do that etching stuff. And if you really want to, to, to get the results of, of physical training, the best way to get it is to physical training. Well, 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 Mr. Right, Kelly, question, Mr. Kelly was, mentioned was on exercise given the cost and time right, factors, right? Right. It was totally balanced surgery with exercise with the cost right. and time factors. Right. I, I mean, I think, how do you, balancing surgery and exercise, I already put my stance on that, but the cost factor, I guess what he's referring to is then paying for exercise and then leading to eating healthy, the cost of that versus the cost of surgery. If that's yeah, well, what he's saying can... is that for some people, they're saying to themselves, the whole, the time cost and how much it takes to actually go to the gym and eat healthy, that over time, that's a pretty big cost. That's when you could have just the Dr. Ed, Dr. Dawes and you could have just like get that spot treatment, get a rub down, get a stuck out. So some people yeah, are saying, but what about Dr. Dawes? What am I going to kill up myself about J for? So what do you think about that? The process, is necessary. the process is necessary for your health because mm -hmm. what if I just decided tomorrow morning I wanted to become a dentist? I could just go and purchase a degree in dentistry and start pulling people's teeth? Correct. Absolutely yeah. not. The process, the process of getting um, acquainted with nutrition and understanding the importance of an onsite is very important. So, yes, your money can get you to the front of the queue or it, 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 the time effective. Oh, I don't want to take time from my business to, to work out yeah. in the morning because I'm a CEO and I need to um, earn X amount of money and these are the markers I need to work. Okay, you will be a CEO for the next, for, for a limited amount of time because you're then taking time off your biological age. You're then aging yourself because you're not prepared to invest in your health, which is the number one investment I would say to anybody because if you don't have good health, no matter how much money you have, you have like Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs, no matter how much money Steve Jobs had, he couldn't stop his death. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, to, so to reduce risk factors, so to reduce the chances of sorry, chronic illnesses, you have to invest in reducing the risk factors, which are reducing your body fat, reducing your high blood pressure, reducing... Um, other issues in your bloodstream, if you have high levels of stress, managing stress better, if you have micronutrient deficiency, fixing those things. Purchasing your way out of it with um, instant gratification does not fix the problem long term, and you'll end up probably quick, quicker to death than, than, than you had wished for, in my opinion, and that's my perspective. Yeah. So that post yeah, that we talking about. The FUPA, the FUPA, Catherine. Right. Right. Well, this is my sister throwing shade at me, right? <laughs> Would you agree that your eating habits play a big factor in getting rid of that pouch, Jay? Jay, don't if get I involved in sibling rivalry. 
I, 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 how, do you, how do we get rid of it without doing that spot treatment that Dr. Dawes could possibly do? Right. If, right. If you're, so if you're to get rid of that, Dr. Dawes, things. Dr. Dawes did mention, actually. He did mention. He said what it would require is for you to bring your butt. So the, 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 the females out there, all right, let's speak to you specifically. Most females who come to the to, to the gym has a body in mind that they've seen on Instagram that they want to bring their body closer to. I'm most. true. I, I don't I didn't say all, most. So I have some women who are on the side of they, they would like a Shelly Ann Fraser. Some say, no, 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 she, she looks too muscular. I don't want her. I rather um, something more slender like... Um, Naomi Campbell or more skinny or something. So the point is- I thought he was gonna say Will McGarrick, right? <laughs> no? <laughs> okay, that's fine. No problem, that's cool. <laughs> the, the, the point is that I'm making all of these body types come with a specific amount of muscle versus fat. What mm -hmm. Dr. Dawes explained earlier, in order to get rid of the food fat, you'd have to drop the body fat excessively for a female. So you'd have to come as low as looking as lean as Shelly and Frazier or even leaner than her in order to the, um, to get rid of, because you can't spot reduce when you're exercising body fat. So you'd have to come down substantially mm -hmm. for eventually that era for body fat to burn. I mean, studies have shown that you, that era is very difficult to burn body fat because of the, the level of blood flow in that era. So, um, I mean, Dr. Dawes goes into these areas regularly, so he, he would know why it is very difficult um, from an anatomy point of view. However, it is possible with exercise, but it would require you to drop to a body fat which is lower than what you would have maybe envisioned to go. However, mm -hmm. there's a process to it, which again is not a quick fix. If you build muscle tissue in the areas that you didn't want to, 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 to go so flat, so to speak, if you built up, so most females, um, if they wanted to keep the, 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 their curves in their hips or keep their butt, a lot of them, when they start to drop body fat, because there is a lot of fat there in the first place, they start to lose fat. However, if they actually built muscle there instead of fat, in the long term, if they reduce the fat, they will still have this muscle here and then reduce the pupa long term. So there is ways, um, but as Dr. Daw said, it may then require the person to go to a lower level of body fat, which they didn't want to, but then it ties back into instant gratification. You know, Jay, there is, there is reward from for taking your body through that health process of reducing body fat and coming to where you want it. So my argument is always enjoy the process. The process is worth it for your body. That's my take. I was saying some patients, um, they come and they say that they, you know, the trainers that they've been working with have them doing a lot of abs and doing exercises that's supposed to burn uh, the fat in that particular area. So this whole thing about spot reduction, you know, we 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 uh, we saw these thigh masters that are supposed to make your thighs look thinner, and the ab, every a new ab machine they, they show you the the celebrities with the ripped abs and all of that is supposed to, you know, show you how you can get to that stage by using this machine or doing this type of exercise. And this right. whole business is about spot reduction through exercise. You know, I'm, I'm glad Jay cleared it up. It just doesn't happen. And mm -hmm. you may lose fat in different areas preferentially, and it's coming straight from your parents. So if you don't want fat in certain areas, choose better parents. Jay, as you were talking about the food and that lower belly fat right. because um, and the, the whole mindset and so on because i must admit that you know during this whole covid lock away time um my mindset was a little affected by food and right. like i would have something sweet to eat like, right. and i leave it in the fridge so i say i'm going to eat it in portions but then it caused right. me to be, rush rush suppose you die in your sleep come on come take it but you know like, what we you know. said <laughs> I was encouraged to just kind of, um, and you know, sometimes, and as we talk about mindset, I think one of the things too, as women, that we do have to face, that as well as my mindset can be, as I recognized that the beaches were opening, and I did a, a quick little check to see how my bikini self was looking, my power was, was, was 
was, was too pain. Was too pain. So it came out of quarantine. And I want to tell you, sir. <laughs> Good, good vegetable quinoa. We still eat now. We still have one whole one. We need only one. But I tell you, that food part is oh, right. back on track. So sometimes, too, a part of your mindset is that you try and I have a quinoa one time, you know, I look too bad in that. And you know, look good. You know, look good. At all. Right. But then, but then, let me address you. I find again. that you said eat vegetable. Right. And but, but let me yeah. mention again, again, with this the symptom versus um cause situation again. And in terms of mindset, what I would suggest to someone like mm -hmm. yourself is just not purchase the in the first place. Don't bring it into your house. Because it's the, all the, the bottom line on mindset is you have to say to oneself, what is it that I'm trying to achieve? And you have to keep making the decision, am I going to keep doing things that's going to give me what I want? Or keep doing things that's not going to give me what I don't want. I like sweets too. Um, I like. I I have a daughter. She's four years old, and she likes Cheerios. But I kind of we kind of not buy Cheerios as often. We now just buy pineapples. Wait, is it Cheerios? Maybe like I, Cheerios. Cheerios. I think she should have other parents. She said, like, "I want some new parents. Give me some new parents." <laughs> so the parents who are <laughs> eating out there are uh, their children snack. I won't call any names. They need to lay off. That's, oh, yeah. That's where it starts. The children so open the trap and they didn't finish, sure. it, so they finish it, so they have to finish it for them. <laughs> so that's why I blocked Naomi when she put out that she's baking cinnamon rolls. I guess now is not a good time to talk about PR chick bakes then. Okay. Nope. No. <laughs> but but Jay, you don't, the, don't, buy, the, the, don't the, buy the food and take it home, but some of us have mango trees at home. We handle that. There you go. Well, there you go, Dr. Dawes. You have to easy on the sugar. <laughs> some some people Jay, have to I some mango trees at home. Jay, as a nutrition expert, what is it about us? Because I have never gone to a gym and smiled the way I smile when I'm eating a piece of cake. So I've never gone and worked out and been like, but you guys I mean, cake. I'm, I'm like, right. <laughs> all right. So let's tackle cakes first. Let's look at cakes first. Dr. Dawes mentioned mangoes, but let's tackle cakes first. So, refined sugar this is sugar that um, is processed, created by man. Um, and the funny thing about sugar is that everybody likes sugar. They, they, some persons have said, I don't know, I didn't see any study on this, but I've, I've read somewhere where they say sugar is, as a, is more addictive than cocaine or some other types of drugs. So sugar is addictive, fact. Um, so to be like any addiction, it comes with weaning yourself off of the addiction. Sometimes a person is just, they, they can't emotionally deal with that because whilst they're weaning off of it, this craving that they have, this emotional craving that they have is more so um, appealing to them than mm -hmm. anything else. I would touch back on the chimps paradox. I can't express how this book is so important by Professor Steve Peters. Your chimp within you is something that everybody has. Everybody has a chimp inside of them. The chimp is what pushes you to emotionally respond to any circumstance or situation. However, you can manage the chimp rather than try to control the chimp. Managing the chimp is planning in advance that I'm going to eat cake Two weeks from now, on Saturday, I'm going to have a slice of my favorite cake, and that will be it. That's managing and planning for your chimp, like you would do in your professional life. I'm sure in your professional life, you don't get up and start becoming emotional in, in, in a meeting or um, telling somebody about their backside if that's what you really felt. You have to conduct yourself in a professional way. So it's still managing the, the, the mindset. You have the emotional you have the logical, but far too often when it comes to looking after yeah. oneself, we become highly emotional and not as logical as we do when we're dealing with other individuals. So, I mean, in terms of nutrition, touching on what Dr. Daw said about mangoes, I mean, mangoes aren't bad for you, but they do carry a high glycemic content, which is high levels of sugar. Now, 
the typical Jamaican experience in terms of eating, say, 50, 60 years ago, was was great because if you didn't live in the country and you climbed the tree to pick mangoes or you did physical activity to get the mango off the tree, then you have earned the right to eat the mango. Also, most persons, I mean, when you speak to persons off, I mean, off the grid that live, live in these places, they they subconsciously um, intermittent fast. So they go for long periods without eating. They wake up in the morning, they may not have breakfast and they may have one meal for the day. So typically what we've seen in rural Jamaica, maybe 60 years ago, um, how persons who would have ate at that time, um, if they would have been doing stuff that we now have to really force ourselves to do. So intermittent fasting is one where you just don't eat all day. You're not grazing all day. You then eat at a specific time or you may eat one meal a day. So if you see guys in the countryside, they always appear so lean um, and look rather healthy than uh, most of us that live in the, in the, in the built-up areas. There's rationales and reasons for that. So you can have healthy sugars as well, but it's just the whole process of discipline. Let me ask a question. Um, just, um, just, just, I just want to know that if, if so, if I climb my mango tree and pick my mango, I get to eat it. Is that what you're saying? Since well, I put in, in the work. Opinion, right? From my nutritional standpoint, it's better to earn your your sugars and your carbohydrates. If you earn them, it's way better for you because you don't want to develop an in insulin resistant, which is basically eating too much processed sugar. But when it comes to fruits, for example, if you earn your carbohydrate content, earn your sugar content by either exercising or doing uh, movement as you would in your daily life. So parking your car um, at the furthest point at the supermarket car park and then walking and then having a mango inside, you may have burned enough calories to reward yourself with eating okay. that mango. So the point is you can exercise to earn the right to eat. But when it comes to refined sugar, um, Rochelle, that's a total different situation. That's right. That's what I, 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 I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. Climb with some weight. They climb the mango tree with some weight. And please send a video. Because I. <laughs> um, Wheeler says, will toes do that much damage to your blood sugar and fat contribution? Who's going to take that question? Yeah, well, you can. Fructose is the, the sugar that is found in fruit, hence the name. Mm -hmm. And fructose get converted to glucose in the liver. And you can. So it's, it's pretty much everything, this, the simple starches from bread, rice, um, to the fruits that you eat that, that contain um, glucose and some fructose, they all get converted to glucose in your bloodstream. Now, Jade spoke about um, your, a glycemic index. Now, certain types of food raise your blood sugar levels faster than others. Those that do, of a high glycemic index. So sugar itself, flour, rice, and some fruits, they get absorbed so quickly that it causes a spike in your blood sugar levels. When that happens, it causes the pancreas to hurriedly produce insulin to bring down, down that high blood sugar level because if a blood sugar level is too high, it can cause damage immediately and in the long term. So you stress your pancreas to produce this insulin. There's a surge of insulin. And what the insulin does is it forces all of that sugar, well, a significant portion to get it back down to normal, out of the bloodstream. And where does it go? It goes in your, sugar, in your blood, uh, in your muscles, if you're exercising and burnt up the sugar in the muscles, or mm. as what happens most of the time, it gets converted to fat in your fat cells so yes you can get fat from eating fruits uh, there there are a lot of persons who would look at it in an extreme view to say that fruit makes you fat because of the fructose gets converted into fat in the liver and it causes fat to liver and that messes up how the liver functions the evidence is not is not um supporting that you can with a high with, with manufactured fructose, so like high fructose corn syrup that is added to everything from salad dressings to medicines to processed foods, 
That is artificial. That is taking starch, cornstarch, and turning it into fructose. Natural fructose gets, gets um, burnt up as fuel or gets converted to glucose. If you're eating too much and your glucose levels go, go too high, whether or not it's from fruit or rice or ice cream or flour, you're stressing the pancreas to produce insulin. Insulin will convert it to fat, and that is how you end up with diabetes later on when the pancreas gets burnt out and insulin resistance because of all of the, the fat getting too used to these repeated high levels of insulin. Yeah, I heard um, that was simple enough, but try to break it down yeah, as no, much. It was. So you just like made me a little emotional. Kimberly says, anyone else not snacking or drinking during this week's show? And I was just thinking of all the times that I eat Naomi's cinnamon roll and how I smile. I'm a poor oh, time. Oh, or oh, a banana bread. I, 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 Naomi, you need to take some of those cinnamon rolls to spray. I'll park far <laughs> and walk and get it. I think she did. I think she did. I, I said Mr. Kelly had some. some <laughs> I, 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 need, I need to try that one. one. I don't know. I, 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 bake on, I bake on Fridays, so I'll 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 try to bring some. All right, I'll be waiting. <laughs> so what I do? Sorry, Jay, I'm not eating. Jay, I'm not eating them. I'm just telling them, okay? I eat them for her, but I'm disciplined, and I wait until Friday when I receive them, and on Friday I have my sweet. Okay. <laughs> Add it back to the equation, right? Because all these um, scientific processes that we've explained and talking about food and people are like, "Why I eat what I want? What 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 the hell are these guys saying?" Or um, the, the 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 education on 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 food, I find is one of the biggest problems, and persons cannot tie it in in what is happening. And one of the ways that um, I find is super effective, and this is something we're working on at Sprite, is how we showcase to you your current chronological age, which is your age right now, according to the day that you were born. However, the effect it's having on you, what is your biological age? Because I think that will be one of the biggest shock values for most of you. If I your told you your biological age and it's 20 years plus what you are, I think then you'd start taking a bit seriously what we're saying to you. Oh, yes. So, so the emerge yes. team is coming to come and check our biological age. I'm going to tell you my biological oh. age, guys. That's a no, don't use those yeah. apps online. Those apps online are no good. There's so many factors. There's so many risk factors you have to take into consideration. And Dr. Dawes will tell you about the length of your telomeres as well can um, affect your, the, your, your age and how you age. But there's certain factors we look at. I thought my fit index one was good. It, it, everything that we measure, it comes back exactly the same on it. But does that affect? Does that look at your sleep? Does it look at your? Um, does it look at your cholesterol levels? Does it look at your blood sugar levels? No, All of these things from... are higher risk factors to how your heart may age and how your upper organs may age. Okay, got it. So using these devices, um, you have to be very careful. But your actual. A closer estimate of your biological age may stop you, Rochelle, from overindulging in that in that fridge. I tell you that, kid you not. <laughs> That's a bad You know, from me looking at my eye, you know the things that like throw me off. So you just need to tell me, say me have like a biological age from all a good be sixty, right? You know, and right. I tell you, <laughs> when you see me on a spy, you can't believe on me. <laughs> Dion Miller says that the door seems like. Eat <laughs> well, well, if you're gonna do that, eat, so, eat um, river sand because sea sand has too much salt. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, not even sand you can't get away from, all right? <laughs> so, let's try to find a balanced diet. <laughs> so, you talked about it. You talked about the social issues earlier. Kathy? Yeah, um, I was saying you talked about the social issues earlier. And I want you to talk a little bit more about that because, I mean, studies show that women are a lot more susceptible to social issues than men are in terms of, um, you know, being overweight or obesity or, or body imaging. Um, so what are some of the social issues that, that people generally face that make them feel compelled to want to do surgery? Men. 
Men. Well, sometimes uh, relationships, uh, there's the whole concept of a revenge body. You just get out of a relationship and you want to look hot because you're on the market now. Uh, sometimes you may have issues within the relationship where the spouse may have lost interest with weight gain or the woman may have become a lot more sensitive knowing that they're not the same person uh, physically when the relationship started. It doesn't matter if it was you know, through the process of giving birth to kids or anything. Like that. They just want to go back. So a lot of uh, my population of patients, uh, I can. It, it's a lot of the forty-something-year-olds who have been taking care of everybody, and they want to do something for themselves now. I don't do the BBL, so I don't get these young girls who want to have the big butts and they want to become Instagram models. It's more of a mature crowd that I would get. Uh, so the primary reason, uh, at least in my practice. Uh, what, well, I mean, the relationship stuff I spoke about, um, you know, so yeah, Jay, they, they, there is um, something with women, but a lot of women are doing it for themselves because they want to try and recapture some of their youth or they think that they've invested so much in taking care of the kids and the spouses and the businesses and so on. They want to treat themselves. And it's a change in mindset because before people would treat themselves by getting a new car or some fancy accessory. Now they're mm -hmm. fixing themselves, you know, and they, they, they the confidence goes up afterwards uh, significantly. And uh, whatever the reason is, they, it, uh, a big part of it is that their emotional well-being improves. And that is why so many people get motivated to continue along there that path you know to preserve that body but you do have uh, as i said you know there's a different set uh, some other surgeons may come across them a little bit more where they want to look have this ideal look uh, of the snatched weights and the the big very big thighs because that's what they're seeing on instagram and mm -hmm. every now and again, you might have somebody like that coming in where they have this aspiration as to what they want to look like. Uh, some of them do it for career uh, moves. Uh, some of them, you know, they want to become Instagram models. They want to increase their following. So they start to post a lot of pictures and so on. Um, others, it's just how they, they, they picture themselves and they mm -hmm. want to end up looking like that. But um, as I say, you know, my practice mainly it's the more mature crow that have their little belly that they want to get off where there's their arms their thighs sometimes it's a chin they don't want the full body transformation you mm -hmm. do have some who come in and want the 360 um but it's still again the more mature 30s um in the 40s even some 50 and 60 year olds they're like, all right, I'm retired now. Let me, I want to start going, uh, going back to the beach again. But mm -hmm. I just want to feel confident in my bathing suit. So uh, it's it's a mix as to why people want. But the, the, the common thread is that they're doing it for themselves mostly, you know, for their confidence. So many people say that, you know, you should just be happy with the body that God gave you, right? I, I've watched a lot of the um the television shows about obesity and the people that experience surgery and i always ask the question how do you get to that point because you weren't born that size there had to be a process for you to get to that size so at what point do you not realize that you have to stop and do something about it like what is it that, that causes people to, to go from being 200 pounds to being 700 pounds and not stopping to think about how, like what happens in between. All right, so there, there are uh, several components. A lot of patients who are in the higher weight brackets, uh, 400 up, they were always big children growing up. They grew up, their parents were big, so you, there's a genetic component to all of it. Not necessarily that like their metabolisms are slower, but they're genetically more efficient at storing fats. They are what you call the thrifted genes. So if you, your parents are obese, chances are you have that gene, you're in danger. Even if you're slim now, you can be obese later on. Mm -hmm. 
So those persons, they will have it harder to lose weight. And the, a, a lot of times what happens is that they just give up. It doesn't make any sense. They've been trying diets and there's a lot of misinformation out there where persons, they will go on these crash diets. When, when they go on the crash diets, what happens is that they lose a lot of muscle mass, as Jay was alluding to earlier. When you lose muscle mass, your metabolic rate slows because muscles burn fat at rest. So we're all sitting here chilling right now. Our muscles are burning fat. Jay's burning way more fat than anybody else because he's the biggest one in the chat. But um, the, the more muscles you have, the higher metabolic rate. So they go on these crash diets. They lose a lot of muscle. So it becomes even harder for them. And I'm not going to call any names of these diets now, but you know, there are some particular ones out there that as soon as the patients come in the office and I look in the chat, so they've been on it. Say, I'm going to tell you what happened. You lost a lot of weight, 50, 60 pounds, but then as soon as you came off, you just regained everything and more. And they're like, yeah. doctor, you know, I was like, if I had a dime for every time I heard that story, I would need to do any surgery at all. Mm -hmm. It always happens. So they get on these yo-yo diets and it's like a hamster wheel that they're running on the whole time and after a while I just give up and i was like i just tired of it and i'm just gonna be a big person and then because their metabolism are so slow they just pack on the weight so they'll put on like 50 60 pounds in two months without even realize, realize realizing and um before you know it they're at you know 400 500 pounds and it's it's difficult extremely difficult at that stage you're talking about stage procedures they may not be safe enough to undergo surgery so if you watch you know the, the my 600 pound life and so on they'll see you see them going on a program before it's because once you get to a certain weight your 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 health issues are so great um, that it, it makes surgery to lose weight and improve your health issues dangerous so you have to lose weight in order to do surgery to lose weight. And um, so it, it, many times it's, it's just people just give up because they're just tired of constantly chasing and they've just been getting all of the wrong advice. And, um, you know, they've been doing a whole lot of cardio and caloric deficits and the metabolism just keeps going. Even that show, The Biggest Loser, um, they, they did a study where they look back on the, the contestants after a couple of years, and these are people who have been on diet and exercise programs and lost uh, 100, 150 pounds and so on. And when they checked them out, uh, the majority of them had regained the weight. The ones that didn't regain were, surprise, surprise, they had endorsement contracts. So their ah, new jobs, were to get up, work out all day, and then go for appearances and endorse products. So the average Joe, when their metabolism, and, and they, they checked the metabolic rates of all of these people, and they were so low, they were in the 800 to 1,000 calorie ranges, and nobody can sit and eat 800 to 1,000 calories per day and not be angry all the time. It's, you're just going to be miserable. You can't sustain a diet like that. And that is why even if they, they were eating in a diet at uh, say 1,500 calories, they were still in excess and the weight is still in the back up. And a lot of persons who come in for the, the, the BMR testing where we check their metabolic rates, we find that their body fat percentage is 50, 60%. Their lean muscle mass is so low and their metabolic rates are 20, 25% below what is predicted for their age and their weight. So they think that the 1,500 calories that they're eating is putting them in a deficit when really and truly, it is, if they ate that 1,500 and were not exercising, they would be gaining weight rather than you know them thinking that, boy, I'm eating like this and I'm exercising, I'm not losing weight. The reason why is because you're running very hard to stay in the same pace. So you know, this is where you you um, and, and Jay can speak more about the programs where you go in and try to increase their metabolism by increasing their their protein, uh, their lean muscle mass. So Jay, just if you want, you can just run into that concept, elaborate on it. Right. Um, yeah. I, I mean, as Doctor Dawes is saying, so persons 
can um, really get emotionally fatigued, annoyed because of wrong advice. Um, the simplest way that I'd like to carry it on by explaining is, is there's two major tissues that we're dealing with when we're, we're talking about fat loss. It's fat, actual adipose tissue, which is body fat and muscle tissue. Now exercise, when you go into a calorie deficit, meaning you're eating way less, somewhere near 1,500 or 1,000 for most people, because you decide, I now want to lose weight. What happens when you get into that deficit that's covered again by Dr. Dawes earlier, your metabolism would adapt. It will become efficient at this new restriction that you've given the body. Mm -hmm. What then happens is if you're not, if you're doing just a whole leap of cardio and in a deficit, you are likely to be burning up lean muscle tissue as well. If you're burning up lean muscle tissue as well, your body's ability to then burn fat is reduced because you need muscle in order to be more efficient at burning fat. So it's very important. I always say this to individuals. If your trainer is not testing, he or she is guessing. You need regular testing to discover what tissue is being lost, right? Because if you're dropping excessive amount of weight and it happens to be muscle tissue, in the long run, chances are, if you relapse, you're going to gain a whole heap of body weight, of body fat. Body fat. Mm -hmm. So you're working excessively hard, you're dropping the weight, you, may, you cheat one weekend, and you then led into a week of cheating, and the pounds just start now piling on because you're in a deficit because you thought I'm just going to reduce my eating and I'm going to do a lot of cardio. Yeah. The exercise needs to be specific. So does the nutrition. Exercise is information to the cells. The type of exercise you do sends a particular type of information. In endocrology, lifting weights, you will secrete more anabolic hormones which lead to more um your body becomes more efficient at developing muscle tissue so you must lift, you must do resistance training because you have to hold on at least hold on to the muscle tissue that you already have even if you don't want to build anymore so that's the first part the second tissue which is the adipose tissue in order to burn fat and not compromise muscle tissue one has to make sure your protein levels are substantial are high enough Different studies recommend different things. I would say a minimum of the amount of lean muscle that you have. So if you're if you weigh 150 pounds as a female and you you are average looking, so to speak, you're maybe carrying about 105 pounds of muscle, and the rest of it is body fat and bones and all this kind of stuff. But you need to hold on to that muscle that you already have because that is the efficiency that's going to allow you to get to where you need to go to and reduce the risk of you then gaining so dropping calories and doing tons of exercise is not the solution unfortunately to long-term fat loss it may be the solution to short-term weight loss but there are specific as i said exercise is information to the cells so is nutrition the types of foods you eat again is information to the cells eating certain foods are going to send a specific type of information to the cells, which is going to basically tell the body, burn muscle, use up all the muscle and energy, and just hold on to all this fat. You can eat, and that will send those signals for that to happen. And, that, and that's when you then go into causing the body serious metabolic issues. Um, that was very sobering, Jay, because I'm wondering what the food I eat is telling my body so I feel very sober. I see a question here. Hi, Roxy. What's your take on waist trainers? I think I can answer for them. <laughs> but I would do waist trainer there. Don't do no, it. Uh, the waist trainer, and this is a question I get, uh, because after surgery with liposuction, you 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 wear a faha, which is a garment, like a waist trainer. And you do that to squeeze down the skin onto the muscle to clear up that dead space where the fat was just removed. But after healing, some people want to continue wearing it, thinking that it's going to continue to shape them. And I tell them that it actually does the opposite because when you don't have this tight thing squeezing in your belly, uh, your muscles, your abs have to work. 
But if this thing is keeping that shape without the abs having to do any work, then the abs are going to get weak and they're going to flop. So when you take off the waist trainer, you're going to have this nice round belly with no muscle tone. When you try to do abs, you're going to be struggling. So you're going to be stuck using this thing if you want to keep your figure until you can actually uh, build up back the tone. And this can actually squish your organs together because it deforms your ribcage and uh, you can there actually are some some studies that, that show that prolonged use of waist trainers can lead to a smaller intra-abdominal compartment you know because you just squeeze everything together so i know it's something that's again well marketed out there and a lot of little shops have them telling you you can have a slim waist and some of them if they said if you're exercising it you're gonna burn again fat, spot reduction you if you use that you're gonna sweat off the fat in that area and so you'll have a, a flat up tummy absolute garbage absolute garbage <laughs> no waist trainers no. so um, gentlemen thank you so much for spending the afternoon with us and if you are not able to wrap I want to ask you two more questions. Um, for somebody that hasn't started exercising or has not been exercising, what do you recommend for them to do to get started? And two, um, for Dr. Dawes, after surgery, what does exercise look like? How long after, what do you recommend for that person to start to get in shape after surgery? Um, what, do you want to go first? Or? All right, I'll take the first. You take the, the second one, Doctor Dog. I'll, I'll do the, the first one. But okay, go ahead. So first. after after surgery, so depending on your surgery, if you're talking about bariatric surgery, one of the big things is that your stomach is extremely small. Or if you have the balloon, it is limited in how much you can hold. So the big thing that's going to limit when you can start exercising is how much you can drink. Like with the VSG, which is the most common procedure that we do in terms of bariatrics. Uh, your stomach is roughly about the size of a green banana. So you can't drink a lot of, uh, of water at once. So even when you're exercising, you're breathing faster. Even if you're not sweating, you're losing more water. You can get dehydrated. So depending on how, uh, how well you're attuned to drinking, sipping, getting in enough water, then you can start with light walking. You're going to be walking the day after surgery. Um, that's part of my routine and then you're home the following day but you can do light walking around the house the apartments but then really and truly longer walks we, we said wait a month before you start going out and that is depending on how much you can drink uh, for liposuction then you it's this usually the the one month the six week because you're gonna have a, a lot of swelling it depends on the area if it's abdomen and so we tell you not to do any abs you can do upper body lunges squats and even when you start to do your ab workout it's more like plants static exercises rather than the crunches but um you can expect some swelling afterwards because of the increased blood flow in the area but that always goes so roughly for everything you can think about two weeks to a month okay. thank you okay yes remind me of the question again um for people that haven't started exercising yet and they want to get into a routine what do you recommend how do they start all right it, it they should all they should they should seek professional help because if they have an injury or potentially have an injury that could come on because of starting exercise then that's a totally different matter. So I would say seek professional help. Um, you may need to speak to your GP as well, so your general practitioner. But I can't be broad with that answer because if you have underlying issues, it's a total different suggestion to somebody who doesn't. Um, but if you if you if you have no underlying issues and you have no pain or aches in your joint, pain or um, generally you want to start with basic strength exercises, which is unilateral exercises. You want to start by strengthening one limb at a time before you move on to bilateral strength exercises. And then, because you want to have a, a, a strong balance structure. You don't want to create muscular imbalances. This is going to cause you lower back pain in the long run. So seek professional help because the risk factors are different based upon what where, where you're coming from. Where, where you're coming from. 
Thank you so much, gentlemen. And Alisa says so much information tonight. So we're very grateful. Thank you for joining us. And JD, March to the dolls. All right. I will I will Thank sneak you. in and link up with you, um, Dr. Doss, with that treat. Sure. <laughs> Just let me know when so I can walk to collect it. Hey, don't <laughs> let me try um, trading, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. All right. so before we close, sorry, I know we're wrapping up, but where can people find both of you? Oh, Jay's already gone. Is he backstage or is he gone? gone? Oh, I'm here. Sorry, where, where um, can people find you? So Jay can start first. Okay. Um, I'm at 35 Don Robin Avenue, um, which is Don Robin. You guys know that's in Kickstart. And we're also online now, so sprylife.com, no matter where you are in the world, we can help you out, um, regardless of the issues that you have. So we're global. Awesome. So you can follow them on Instagram, Spry Live, Spry Training, Spry Recovery. Everything Spry. Spry Nutrition. And Spry Nutrition. And Dr. Right. Doc, where can we find you? I know that you're having a summer special right now. Yeah, <laughs> in response to the, the overwhelming post quarantine demands, uh, but we are at, we're at uh, Windsor Wellness Center and uh, it's at uh, 22 Windsor Avenue in Kingston. And I'm also in Sablamar, Sablamar Medical Center uh, every other Friday. Uh, the best way to reach me is via Instagram at Dr. Aldaz or um, the number is what for WhatsApp for us is four five five four five two seven. Four five five. Four five two seven. Four five two seven. Four five two seven. On the screen. And and what we we'll, what we'll do for you ladies between me and Doctor Dawes, we'll be able to tell you tomorrow the overwhelming amount of um, contacts Doctor Dawes would have over myself because it is the option that persons will go with. <laughs> I'm gonna. But, I'm gonna. Know, at the end of the day, I'm gonna. At the end of the day, I'm still going to try to try and help. Okay, Rochelle. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Have a good right. evening. Thank you so much. You Bye. 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 <laughs> wow, that was a lot of information. Yes. So. Oh, yeah but clearly very useful and and clearly our viewers were very engaged and into this conversation because we've gotten so much great feedback so we haven't done a book for a while yeah. and so this week we are going to be looking at um adam grant's the originals it's a book about how non-conformists non move the world so look for it it's everywhere it's on amazon you can get it on audiobook and we're going to be covering this book next week Adam yeah. Grant's The Originals. And again, remember, it's time for us to do what, ladies? Let's try again. Reset, reset. Reset. <laughs> so remember to sign up for Reset. It's going to be on July 18th. That's our workshop. Um, you can register on our Instagram page at Ready to Emerge. It's going to be on July 18th. It's a virtual workshop from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. So come ready to work. Come ready to work because it's it's gonna be a workshop. Yeah. Um, yeah. Registration is now open on our Instagram page, so just go to Instagram at Ready to Emerge. And again, remember to follow us on YouTube. Subscribe, subscribe to the page, share like our video, like, share, follow us on Facebook as well. Um, wow, this has been an eventful evening. Yeah. So the yeah. good thing for many of us is that. We were planning right after the broadcast to run downstairs to the fridge to warm up the little piece of pastry that was left. But you know what I'm gonna do, girls? I'm gonna go to my bed. Drink some water. Drink some water. I can eat one of Simo's popsicles. Is yeah. that for many reasons? That's I know, but we won't even talk about what is in the popsicles. So <laughs> they are. So but guys, before we wrap up, just to recognize some of our local purveyors um, who are doing some absolutely marvelous yeah. things. So for those of you who follow the commissary, 
Simo has some amazing things at the commissary at Devon House. Um, there's also Pink Apron. Um, stuff. I went there today to buy a bottle of vanilla, right? That's what I went there for. And I left with marlin dip, crab dip. Um, a pop I got dip. a rub there, a, a rub from that Pink Apron rub. It was so, it's so good. But then also on the weekend, I got mac and cheese from Pink Apron. Evan Lefada, it was good. But also Banyan is Banyan catering, Simone That's Banyan. That's what I ate. That's what I just mm -hmm. ate. I had the stew peas. Mm -hmm. and and so, good. so we are encouraging you, follow Simone Banyan at Easy Meals, follow Pink Apron, follow Simone, Simone's oh, catering. Okay. But please support our local. And every week we're going to, from now on, we're going to be actively showcasing our local suppliers who are actually manufacturing things, doing some amazing breakthroughs. Yeah. So please follow and Do you remember that baking company that was advertising to us today, Rush? Oh, PR, PR Bakes, PR Chick Bakes. I'll have PR Fancy QR code and PR Excitement. Guys, it's not open to the public yet i'm still you know testing out you know with little groups but guys i've i've taken my my co my coping with covid um passion into possibly a business so mm -hmm. i have been testing selling my cinnamon rolls and my chocolate chip cookies um so they'll soon be out and about but you can follow at pr chick bakes on instagram mm -hmm. She has a page and she said it's not for the All right, you know, here she said about I said not about it, Katty. Thanks, Nai. <laughs> so, so when the Emerge team is big and fat, it's because of Naomi Garrick. Well, maybe you could walk to my house to pick them up and then you'll earn it. Like <laughs> or I could be disciplined like what Jay says and just block you. And not have it at all. So we have lots of we have lots of options. <laughs> so thank you guys for joining us again tonight. It was a great show. We thank you for your participation. Thank you for showing up for us every week. Yes. Thank you. You know, I see Lansdale came back this week. Thank I you for know. making it back. <laughs> Alicia, Weeda, Gabby, Veronica, welcome. <laughs> Ashley, Ashley. was giving bear jokes. Where is she? Yes. We have Dion. Right, that's Roxy. Oh, Roxy. Hi, Roxy. So thank Don't you guys for a wonderful rest of your week. It's hump day, right? So you're almost there. We're almost at Friday. It's almost the weekend. Two more days. That's and hopefully we will not melt before the weekend, right? Yeah. 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 So yeah. have a wonderful evening, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of the week. Bye. 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 <laughs>